want to first thank Flo Anthony for joining Toxin Magazine's Everything Old School podcast. Now, Flo Anthony, for people who may not know who you are, could you tell us a little about who you are and some background? Oh, my name is Flo Anthony. I'm a celebrity journalist um, and an author, and I also uh, do a daily syndicated uh, radio feed. Um, and I've been in this business a very long time. I guess I could say 40 years. Um, I started when I was two, <laughs> but I, I could say 40 years. And, and during that time, um, it's encompassed of sports, uh, entertainment, journalism, uh, as I said, radio, I did quite a bit of television back in the 90s. And um, I guess uh, some of my claims to fame would be I was the um, first Black woman to work in the sports department at the New York Post, and then the first person to work in the entertainment department at the New York Post, and of course, the first uh, Black person to work on the uh, esteemed page six at the New York Post. Uh, prior to that, I had a column, a sports column called Keep Punching that was in the African-American newspaper. And then I did publicity for 12 different um, world champion boxers. That's how I really got to the New York Post. They were looking to hire a black woman in the sports department there uh, that had a background in sports. I also represented football players and um, you know several other athletes during that time period. So what made you want to get into this crazy business that is <laughs> so chaotic and so controversial? What was what inspired you? Well, the business kind of hired me. I didn't hire the business. Of course, I came to New York City originally to be an actress when I got out of college, when I graduated from Howard University. Uh, but I started, even though I worked, I mean, I, I'm a voice of a character on Sesame Street and I did soap operas. I mean, I really actually did work, you know, did movie things. But um, for some reason, you know, I've always been able to write. When I grew up um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I was the youth reporter to our newspaper there, the Ann Arbor News for my high school. Uh, it's something that I could always do. And, you know, people are so shocked I write novels, but I've always been a creative writer since I was a little kid. Uh, when I was very small, I was enamored by Caroline Kennedy under that desk and her, her father, the late John F. Kennedy's um, uh, presidential office. And so I would write letters to the White House. I couldn't have been any more than six years old or something, seven at the most. I would write letters to the White House and they would send me back the pictures of Caroline Kennedy. So then I think I was in the second grade. I wrote a play about Caroline Kennedy and the school put the play on. So this is just something that my mother has always said is a God-given talent. It's just something that I could always do. And that's how the writing came about. I kept, um, I had a cable show called uh, Go With The Flow. And a guy uh, asked me if I could have three boxers on. Well, one was Harold Weston. He was actually um, retired welterweight ch uh, challenger. He fought for the title twice, but didn't win either. Once against Wilfredo Beliches and the other one against, um, um, oh God, I just saw the guy. Ugh, I was just with him in California, Pepino Cuevas. So um, uh, at that time, he was the matchmaker for the boxing at Madison Square Garden. And he brought along Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, who at that time was the uh, WBA uh, light heavyweight champion, and Sal Mambi, who was the WBC uh, junior welterweight champion. And so they said, oh, we love this TV show. Is there something you could do to help us? So they became my first clients. And then after that, um, I started working for Butch Lewis and Michael Spinks. And then um, it just grew from there. I was very upset when Mamby lost the title. Uh, I believe we were in um, Akron, Ohio. And I was very upset about it. And Larry Holmes just saw my devotion to Mamby. And he said, can you come to Easton on Monday? I'd like to talk with you. I said, no problem, because you know Easton's just down the road from New York City. And then he said, are you able to travel? And then he said, could you work for me too? So that opened up a whole new level of life for me because, you know, I grew up middle class, a daughter of two school teachers and, and whatever, but, and I thought I had had this wonderful life, but being able to travel with Larry because he, until uh, my Michael beat him, he held that heavyweight title for five years. So 
being able to travel and do all that work for him, first class and everything, it, uh, it was just unbelievable to me. And the people that I came across and all of the people that I had to meet and deal with working with him. And it was um, another guy, he passed away, Booker. He did um, boxing publicity, he lived in Los Angeles. So we were out there in Las Vegas when Larry was fighting Marvis Frazier. And that's Joe's son, Larry knocked him out in the first round. But uh, Booker said, ask Larry to let you work in the press room here because people are going to be in there from all over the world. And that way you will get these contacts from all over the world. So I just kind of learned as I went along. And uh, I, that's how my career started. Now, what was your most, I don't want to say most successful, but most exciting opportunity what was the most exciting opportunity that maybe you weren't looking for but it just fell in your lap well I've never looked for any of them other than I said I did come here to be an actress <laughs> but I could write so that's how I got into all this publicity stuff uh you know what they were all pretty exciting I mean I even met uh the Michael Latoya, Janet, and Randy Jackson. Before I came to New York, I was at home for a year of uh, working, getting a degree in um, social work. Went back home to the university at the University of Michigan and, and um, working in Ann Arbor. Um, I actually got a certificate in social work uh, technician. Uh, as, as so, at any rate, um, then um, I was. We took these kids because I worked at this group home. And we took them to Disney World and we were standing in line and this one of us said, Flo, that's Michael Jackson. Now, you know, these are already kids that, you know, have problems. So I wasn't thinking about her. Flo, that's Michael Jackson. Then she just got loud. Flo, that's Michael Jackson. So then they turned around and looked and I turned around. I said, oh my God, it is Michael Jackson. So that's the first time I met them. And, you know, from there developed a lifelong uh, relationship with, you know, both Michael and um of course, Latoya, you know, she's my best friend. So um, one of, <laughs> I can't say that. All right, the rest of y'all, you're my best friends too, but she also is. <laughs> Cause I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I traveled uh, around the world with Latoya. I went to Paris and to London, you know, with her also. So um, I guess that was exciting because whoever would have expected that, but it's all been exciting. And when I think, in, I mean, you know, for me, right. born in Mississippi, you know, raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan, it's it's all been very exciting. Uh, to, from the the people that I interview, just everything. I was looking at Courtney Vance uh, when um, Angela won the uh, guy that's been so. I, was it the Critics' Choice of the Golden Globe? Out of the, one of the awards she won the other week, and so many of them floating out there. But at any rate, I was watching him record her and I said to somebody, you know, I did his very first interview when he was in Fences on Broadway back in the 80s. And then he was nominated for a Tony and everybody got so excited at the post that one of your interviewees has been nominated for a Tony. So, you know, it's all been a exciting run. I have to say that. Um, and I didn't expect any of it. I just always, you know, I'm somebody who was taught to get up in the morning and go to school or go to work. And I, I've never um, been a controversial person, uh, you know, so much. I've always been someone who followed instructions and, you know, just, I never thought, did somebody say, you do this? No, I, I, that's never been me. I've just always done what I was asked to do. And I think that's a great part of it also. Now, I did read recently that you thought you weren't invited to the Michael Jackson Broadway play. Tell me what happened with that. I wasn't invited to opening night. I wasn't invited. And I was fine with it on going Friday night. I was fine with it because Michael uh, Spinks, he was coming to town. I was fine with it. You know me. I'm not going to fight people or anything. I was I was cool in the game until I started seeing on television people going to the premiere. Then I woke up at two o'clock in the morning the next That day I did complain to someone and I said, you know, I'm feeling kind of bad I wasn't invited to the premiere, but I wasn't really talking about them. I was talking about all of them, the estate, another Jackson friend who was running people in and out of there like chili. I was talking about everybody. I never mentioned any names on Facebook. But then I woke up at two o'clock in the morning. It was on TV again. And Terry yeah. and, and, and uh, he calls himself Blank, he calls himself BG. Now they were coming out 
And I just got mad and started writing on Facebook. I guess I'm not an influencer. I guess I'm, I am the only person that took up for Michael Jackson. And uh, that's one reason I don't have a, a TV show now. You know, I took up for him when his own family did. And so I just was upset. And so then, then I uh, did, oh, hell broke out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was crazy. And, you know, so then I said, okay, I'll take the post down. Because uh, someone woke me up at 7.30 in the morning and one of these people I didn't even know. And it was crazy. I take the post down. And then they called back and they said, well, I want to thank you for doing that, but your supporters are still supporting you. I said, well, I can't stop my supporters from supporting me, but I'll now I'll issue an apology for what I said, which most people think I was crazy to do because I didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm, right. And so um, then one of my colleagues uh, well, one colleague that's supposed to, was a best friend, but unfortunately we have not spoken since this incident. And that's been almost a year ago, March <laughs> of 2022. Um, uh, he decided to do a page six story. She called me and said he was going to do it. He said, it's a New York story. It's this is that. And you know, I'm an alumnus of page six. So I, you know, I didn't wait. He called me. He said, yeah, this is Carlos. I said, oh. So I said, look, I'm an alumnus of page six. I'm the first person, black person there. You about the third one there, just milch the story. And he was saying, no, he wanted to do it. And so that made things escalate a little more. But I came out smelling like a rose in the store. You read it. Right. You know, yeah, because I was yeah. telling to support that, you know, I mean, long, I love Michael Jackson, long live the legacy. I want everybody to win. And these two people that were hollering and screaming at me in the morning came at me so differently. Another person called that was involved with it. Uh, she said, did I do something wrong? Do I need to take you to dinner? I can get the tickets. I mean, it was just so different. Then this other person, uh, this uh, young woman that I know through um, Winston Marcellus, she called me on behalf of the manager of the kid who plays Michael Jackson <laughs> and said, you know, we're sorry. Is this something anybody can do to help? I mean, so it, it all turned out okay. I went to see the play. It's the best thing I've ever seen in life because the thing with Lynn Nottage, who wrote, wrote the, um, the script, a lot of people don't know that Katherine Jackson uh, is a country western singer that she could sing that that's where those kids got that voice from and oh, it's a wow. scene in that play that michael and his mother are singing together and i was like so few people know that mm -hmm. so she really she really got it so right because most people just think that it was her husband that was so well he could play the guitar okay and that's how they broke tito broke his guitar playing around with it so then he said let me see what you can do and that's how they're, they're musical on both sides. I mean, Jermaine, he plays the guitar. Randy plays the piano, guitar, a lot of stuff. Uh, they, you know, they play instruments and things, but mostly you would see um, Jermaine and Tito playing those guitars. Now I'm familiar with your career. Do you remember doing um, WDKX in, in Rochester, New York? You were- I was, Every day. Okay, and I'm you still were- on every day. Oh, okay. I haven't listened yeah. to Debbie DKX in a long time. Yeah, I'm still, I've been on it every day for 30 years. It's and and that's where I know a lot of your history because um I'm from Rochester, New York. And how did you how do you get the school? Like, I mean, you you're on there and you know stuff and you're try, dropping the tea. How did you get the school from everywhere and from anybody? Well, uh, part of my success with that is that um I've only had problems with two celebrities in life, uh, you know, Whitney Houston and then Spike Lee used to needle me, but that was always that we were real, you know, friends. I, you know, everybody's always liked me and uh, enjoyed talking with me. And uh, I think that's part of it. And then plus I kind of ran in a famous crowd. You're talking, you know, Michael Jackson, Latoya Jackson, you know, you're talking, um, you know, other celebrities, when you moved to New York City, you met, I, you know, I got in with all those sports figures. Uh, so I was always places when things were happening. Um, the night after um, Mike Tyson and Robin Gibbons got married, I was at a school, the school days premiere. That's how long ago that was. And um, I, I overheard somebody saying, you know, Mike Tyson married Robin Gibbons in Chicago today. I turned around and said, really? They said, yeah, really, by this um, um, priest or something or other. So I called the post. Back then, you didn't have a cell phone. I called on the uh, pay phone and told them. 
And of course that was a front page story. So I was just always places where stories um, uh, were breaking all of the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's, I still am, it's uh, kind of ironic for two weeks now, a lot of people have been telling me those, uh, those uh, cops, you know, the black on black crime that happened down in Memphis was personal. And someone told me one of them took a picture after they had beaten poor Tyree Nichols to death and sent the picture to uh, a, a girlfriend. And yesterday it came out, the police said that they, they took a picture and sent it to six people, including a female. Now, if I knew this two weeks ago, Oh, what what took these cops so long to figure it out or find it right. out? So it's it's a matter of knowing people and people telling you things, you know. So when I look at personalities like you know television personalities, um, journalists, black journalists, as you said, most people like you. You know, you knew a lot of stuff. You talked about it. What do you think is the difference between someone like you and someone like a Wendy Williams where people hate it? What do you think is the difference? Well, that's kind of loaded, uh, but I'll go okay. out on a limb with saying, first of all, you know, we all now know now, it's come out in the open that she had all this great, this cocaine problem and all this kind of stuff. Uh, one, she was always on drugs, but the, the other thing, she was always mean. Now she's never been mean to me other than she did when she went back to WBLS, she had me fired. She said there wasn't room for both of us there. So that wasn't too nice. But um, oh, wow. she, in my opinion, um, has always been mean spirited. Uh, and I feel very sorry um, for what hap has happened to her to let a man in life beat you down when you are at the top of your game like she was. It shouldn't have had to happen. But what part of it happened, she never had any friends. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's part of it all. It, it, but it, it just, um, that didn't have to happen. And I've tried to be very friendly, giving pieces of jewelry and stuff in, in our lives and time. But I really do feel bad that what happened to her happened. It just, to me, you can't let life beat you down. No matter what happens, you have to give it to God and decide, okay, this is now, that was yesterday. We got to move toward tomorrow. Right. And because he was so mean and nasty to so many people and you know all, all that outing and stuff she was doing supposedly or accusing people of being gay and this and that, when she was doing it, it, it wasn't like it is now. You know, it, it, what, we weren't it's such an open world to everyone, no matter, you know, what they w wanted to be or wanted to do or were born to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, she did things just to be mean and terrible. Now, you so mentioned something thing. about her getting you fired. Now, mm -hmm. the Breakfast Club had this question, have you ever gotten someone fired? Now, how did you know that she was actually responsible for you being fired? They told me. <laughs> so they told you that it wasn't big enough for both of us. And what's so bad about it, they took me off, told me this about 20 minutes before I was supposed to go on air that day. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Is there a lot of competition when you think about there's not many Black women on television, especially journalism, journalists, is it a difficult business? Yeah, I think it's a difficult business. Um, you know, when I, I, you know, I was the first, I mean, Wendy, what she was kind of doing on the radio, she was getting out of tabloids and I was writing the stories in the tabloids. And I, you know, I'm the first to, um, to work in um, mainstream media, you know, in, like I said, the three different parts, a, a black woman in sports, a black person in entertainment, and then of course a black first black person on page six, which I that's to me uh, my greatest accomplishment in life. Um, uh, but um, and, and back then it it wasn't there was a girl C J out of Minnesota, uh, the Minnesota paper. She may even still be there, but it was still kind of a different type of column. Well, you talked about being the first, right? When you're the first, there's a lot of so there was no one that inspired you in this profession or, or what, no, as you I, know, when I, you think I about you, it. I, I fell into being a gossip right. columnist because I 
kept breaking um, stories when I was over on the in an entertainment department. Right. When I with that uh, Mike Tyson, even when I was in the sports department, uh, you know, my friend of mine played for the uh, Chicago Bears, the eighty six team that won the Super Bowl, and he called me up and said that I think it was it Jim McMahon or somebody they had um painted this Adidas thing on their headband and they got fined for five thousand dollars. So that was like a pretty good page six item. I was always breaking stories. And, and so that's how I got promoted. I right. I, I got promoted because I worked hard. <laughs> right. And like when I look at you, I, I didn't think... really have anybody to uh, that was doing that that was right. Blind, uh to um to to look up to. No, I really didn't. I, I had Janet Langhart. Um uh she was a, a pretty a, a good mentor of mine. She was on television. Um as a uh, talk show host. Um, and I did happen to meet her and I was really enamored with her. She's a very, very beautiful woman. But no, I really didn't have a, a role model to doing what I do, no. Right, because when I think of you again, and I feel like you're one of the first people, in my opinion, that really made me look at journalism like, oh my God, that's the way I want to do it. I didn't want to be on the news, I guess, well, you know, being a robot reporting what everybody's talking about, you were so different than what was out there from my experience watching you. So what do you say to women like me who watched you and was like, oh my God, this is like, this is who, who I want to mimic, you know, somewhat of my career. Well, I think it's important that first of all, you have to have talent. Nobody can teach anybody to write. Yeah. Uh, that's just something you can take courses that can tell you how to structure things and 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 you know to uh, uh, do punctuation, but you you have to know how to write. And in the case of my novels, it's a real God given gift. I mean, those characters just kind of flow out, even though the main one is me. You know, <laughs> right. God, right. God, um, but you know, you just kind of those things just kind of flow on out. So um, that's the first thing. And then after that, you just have to be diligent and, and just pursue what you want. And I was very fortunate, you know, to be in that uh, after Jane Kennedy, you know, being the second person in the sports arena and, you know, getting into boxing the way I did and representing all those world champions, including the late great Muhammad Ali, um, to uh, be able to parlay there. And I had to set up training camps and and I just, I just learned as I went along, we needed ring girls. We were in Scranton, Pennsylvania uh, for a fight that uh, Larry Holmes did. I looked up to a modeling school and went over to the modeling school <laughs> and then had a little ring girl contest and got the ring girls. So um, <laughs> you have to be innovative too. <laughs> right, right. Now, Marquis did tell me um, you have a connection to Russell Simmons. Yeah, I've been friends with him a very, very long time, uh, since the 80s. And when I had one of my uh, magazines, um, Gladiator, it was a black sports magazine, he was on my board of directors. Um, uh, he also, um, you know, gave me um, advertisements from all his, uh, his Def Jam records. He's been a huge supporter of mine for many years. Now, what do you think about these accusations that have been levied against uh, Russell Simmons. I haven't heard much from him. But. All I can say is that Russ denies them. I'm not going to um, comment any further on them, even though I know, you know, several of the women, but I just have to say that Russ does deny them and, um, and go from there. Um, okay. He was never criminally um, charged with any of it. I believe that one of them he may have settled, but uh, I think after he settled it, he regretted it because nothing, I think he was doing that for something criminal to come and nothing did. Uh, he was out at Grammys all weekend. Uh, he went to Music Hairs, he went to Clive Davis's party, and he also gave a private dinner, you know, because it is the 50th uh, anniversary of hip hop. Okay. Okay. Now, is there anything that you know that you haven't disclosed, like say some gossip that you know about that is 
<laughs> that you've been holding on tight to from back no, in the day? No, no, no. Just all the uh, regular stuff happening out there every day. <laughs> and you said currently, what are you currently, what are you working on? Uh, well, right now I'm working on a lot of stuff. I still have the daily syndicated radio show. I'm in 20 markets. It's syndicated by AURN and Super Radio. Uh, and that's five days a week and three stories a day. In fact, when I finish with you, I still got to write up tomorrow's show. I've got the info, but I just got to write and put it together. Uh, and then I have um, five columns a week. Um, I have a go with the flow that goes just in the New York Amsterdam news. Then I have another go with the flow that goes into other black papers, including Caribbean Life, uh, Philadelphia Sunday Sun, Columbus Times, and NewJerseyUrbanNews.com. And then I write a column for uh, AM New York. It's a daily, my column is weekly, it's called Big Apple Buzz, but it's a daily uh, mainstream paper in New York City, and that column's called Big Apple Buzz. And I write a column for Dan's Papers, that's a Southampton, uh, well, Hamptons um, period, uh, weekly magazine format, um, and that column's called South of the Highway. Okay, so are you on social media? How do we stay updated? Yeah, on I'm on social media, and all my names are different because I didn't understand <laughs> what you're supposed to do. So I'm on Twitter as at Banana Nose Kid, and that comes from when my cousin passed away. I had to go out to San Francisco to take care of things, and all her passwords, her password was Banana Nose Kid. So then I just... Um, adopted that and have stuck with it. And then on Instagram, I'm flow underscore author. And then on Facebook, I'm Florence Anthony. And it's not flow because when I started Facebook, I thought you had to just put your full name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> years and years ago in the dark ages. So now, is there anything else you want us to know that you think we should know? Um, again, I've followed your career, so I do know a lot about you. So I, again, I was, it's my pleasure to have an opportunity to speak with you and, and just learn a little about you. Well, I appreciate that. This has been lovely. No, that's about it, you know. <laughs> watching. So again, thank you so much for taking- Well, I can get the of names of my novels. That might be a good thing. Yes, well, that would be perfect. Great. Uh, the newest one is called Last Call for a Deadly Diva. And it's very interesting. I found out my cover girl is Brittany Bell, who has three children with Nick Cannon. I found that out by accident uh, when um, one of the people working with him came into my book signing. And he was, that's Brittany. She's a model. That's Nick's girl. I said, oh, okay. And then the one uh, prior to that is called Last, um, One Last Deadly Play. And the other one, the first one, the second one really, it's called Deadly Stuff Players. My first novel, Keeping Secrets, Telling Lies, is no longer in commission. But um, Deadly Stuff Players, you can still get that. Um, uh, one Last Deadly Play, and finally, Last Call for a Deadly Diva. And then I'm laying those characters to rest. I got to get some new people. Now, where do we get those books from? Uh, Walmart.com. BarnesandNoble.com, Target.com, I think in those stores, Amazon, oh. Kindle. Uh, if you Google uh, any of them, uh, especially Last Call for a Deadly Diva, I think it has, because it's the newest one, the others are kind of old, it has the biggest uh, distribution. Oh, okay. So we'll look for those. And again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to speak with me. All right. Thank you for having me. You have thank a wonderful you. weekend. You too. Go Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs>